Wow, what a privilege to have you spend a few minutes with us here at the World Equestrian Center. I'm Chaplain Larry Spielman, and this may be the most important thing that you do this week. We believe God's Word was meant to help you in an everyday journey of life, so be blessed as we get started today. So welcome to the World Equestrian Center. We're uh, glad that you're here this morning. Uh, looking forward to God ministering to us and meeting with us here. Uh, so thankful that you could join us. Um, if you've been watching online and keeping up with us a little bit, you'll know that we've been in a series called Idioms with a Horse. And uh, you know, idioms, I say this uh, every week right now while we're in this series, but just in case you're just catching this one, idioms with a horse really has to do with using words that don't necessarily mean what uh, they say literally, but you're trying to make an impact or trying to uh, have some kind of a, uh, an understanding with, with somebody that's a little bit more than what, uh, what, you, what you could say. So you use these words to emphasize uh, some of the things that you're thinking. And so uh, an idiom that uh, I wanted to share with you this morning that I think is, is uh, pretty, pretty applicable to a lot of uh, the things that we're doing right now is... Um, going on a wild goose chase. Now, I don't know, I haven't seen too many people chasing geese around, uh, but I do know some people who'd like to chase geese off of their property, especially if they've got a pond or something like that. Uh, they don't like all the mess that the geese bring, but I really haven't seen anybody uh, chasing geese around anywhere. So, so really what this idiom is, is addressing or talking about is doing something that's somewhat pointless, uh, that just wastes a lot of time. And uh, you do it over and over again, and you don't get any results out of it. That's going on a wild goose chase, trying to address something that's not that you really can't address. But anyway, so so that's an idiom, so that you understand that. And so uh, as we talk about uh, idioms, each one of these that I share each week has something to do with a horse, or is involved with. Uh, uh, using a horse for some reason. And today, uh, the idiom that we're using is uh, wild horses couldn't either stop me or drag me away. Um, we're not really talking about people who are having to fight with horses or uh, wrestle with horses to get through and do what they want to do. But it's just a way of saying something uh, in a little stronger term to say, you know what, uh, this is, th there, I'm going to be determined. I've got tenacity in my life, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accomplish whatever it, it means that I have to do. Now, you know, this is an important thing in a lot of situations in life. And I've, I'm convinced that uh, I've watched too many people over the years that threw in the towel, by the way, that's an idiom, threw in the towel way too soon and gave up because they didn't have the tenacity. Uh, wild horses did drag them away. It didn't even take wild horses sometimes to get people off track and get them to do something different. And so uh, I, I think that tenacity is a, is, a, is a great value in most places in life. It's always interesting to uh, watch some of these uh, reality shows. And a lot of them that are like uh, whoever lasts the longest wins. And, and, you know, every once in a while we'll watch this show where people are dropped off in the wilderness and they live there alone and all of this stuff. And, and you know, they'll go days and then all of a sudden the littlest thing will just go wrong and these people will, will tap out and have somebody come and get them. And I, and I just think, wow, it didn't even take wild horses to drag them off. I've seen people leave after the first day or two. And uh, then there's others that, you know, last for 70 days and, uh, and on, you know. But, but tenacity is an important thing in life. The Apostle Paul uh, was a great example of tenacity. I mean, he really showed us what it means to stay focused and stay connected and stay determined to what God calls us to do. And I want to share with you uh, this from uh, chapter, uh, I'm, excuse me, Second Corinthians chapter 11. And Paul is addressing a situation with the church there where they may have been thinking that he wasn't all that he said he was. And he was just trying to tell them, I've been through a lot and, and I'm still focused on what God wants me to do. But let me share this with you. Uh, he said, um, I know I sound like a madman, but I have served him far more. I, I have worked harder, been put in prison more often, been whipped more times without number and faced death again and again. Five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. 
Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. I traveled on many long journeys. I faced dangers from rivers, from robbers. I faced dangers from my own people, the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I faced danger in the city, danger in the desert, on the seas. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. I've worked long and hard. Enduring many sleepless nights, I've been hungry and thirsty, and I've gone without food. I've shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. And then besides all this, I have the daily burden of concerns for all the churches. Now listen, wild horses couldn't drag Paul away from the mission that God had given him. I, I just think that's a, that's a powerful thing. When you, when you realize all that Paul went through... The apostle suffered so many different things. He got up and got back up and started doing what God called him to do. Uh, I mean, at one point he was stoned and they thought he was dead. And he still got back up and went back to preaching again. He wasn't going to listen to, to people trying to stop him. Wild horses couldn't do anything to deter him. And this is what he says in Philippians. Paul said this, everything else is worthless when I compare the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ. I'm telling you, this is tenacity. This is determination not to give up. And I, I believe this morning that we need to be encouraged, especially right now, in all the things that we're going through, to realize that, that there's a, been a, a trail blazed before us of people who had tenacity and determination not to give up. And we need to be encouraged that we can do the same, that we don't have to give up, that we don't have to hold back, that we can do what God called us to do. Uh, I, I, I was thinking about this question and, and thinking about wild horses dragging us away or stopping us from something. And, and, you know, when you read this about Paul, you have to ask the question, why are Christians so committed? Why would Paul put up with all the things that he put up with and still keep going back and doing it over again? Why would he do that? Why would Christians do that? Well, I know why Paul did it. Paul loved people. Paul did. He, he knew the value that God had placed in each person's life and how important each person was. And listen, he was determined to do whatever he could to keep people from leaving this world without a relationship with Jesus Christ. He understood the consequences of dying without, uh, without a relationship with Jesus. And he didn't want anybody else in the world to die and not know that they were bound for heaven, that they had that opportunity to have eternal life. And so he was, he was always, always looking for opportunities to tell people about the Jesus that he loved and that he served. I, I, I love his heart here. And I don't know, sometimes I, I think it's, it's, it's hard to feel this way. But, but this is Paul's heart. In Romans, he said this, my heart is filled with bitter sorrow and unending grief for my people. My Jewish brothers and sisters, I would be willing to be forever cursed, cut off from Christ, if that would save them. Talk about a heart for people. Talk about somebody who was determined to make sure every got, everybody got the message of the gospel. Paul said, even if I had to give up my relationship with Christ, even if I was cut off completely, if that would save the, my brothers and sisters, that's what I would do. Now, of course, we know that you can't do that. Everybody's responsible for themselves. Paul understood that, but at the same time, that was his heart. He was saying, I would do anything. I would stay in this race. I would do whatever I had to do to see people brought to Jesus. Talk about a commitment. Talk about tenacity. Talk about wild horses not being able to stop you from doing something. That's him. Now listen, I think one of the reasons that Christians focus on this and are so determined in what they do and what God's called them to do is because we realize as believers what this free gift is that we have. We can't earn it. Matter of fact, in another place, Paul wrote in Ephesians, he said, God saved you by his grace when you believed. You can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. In other words, he's saying, you can't earn it. Lots of people think, if I'm just good enough, if I do enough good things, maybe I can help enough people, poor people, uh, you know, encourage people, do the right things, then I'll, I'll make it to heaven. But Paul's saying, it's more than that, because you can't earn it. Because we, we boast about those things, don't we? I mean, you hear people all the time talk about all the good things they've done in life. 
Matter of fact, if I, a lot of times if I ask somebody, hey, are, do you know if you're going to heaven? They'll, they'll start telling me all the good things that they've done in life. Not realizing that it's all about a relationship with Jesus. And so, and so Paul's saying, we don't have any reason to boast. This is, a, this is a gift that's available to every single person in this world. All you have to do is trust Jesus for the salvation. Now, I, I really believe that that, is, that love is what motivates us to do what God has called us to do. Because we'd get tired and we'd get worn out. And like Paul, you'd give up after you've been so, through so many things. But listen, we have an example, not only in Paul, but we have an example in Jesus. He modeled tenacity in his ministry. If you think about his life here on earth, if you read anything about him in the Gospels, the New Testament, you'll see all of the things that Jesus went through. The religious leaders were jealous of him. They, they hated this guy that came on the scene and could draw a crowd. They were jealous of him. They found fault with everything he did. He could heal a person that had been, been sick uh, for years he could raise them up and give them their, their legs back and they could walk again. He could do all kinds of miracles. And if he didn't do it the right way at the right time, they were mad at him and he didn't do it right. Talk about, I mean, wouldn't you just be like, what can I do to please you people? I mean, that's where Jesus was in, in a lot of this. They, they found fault in his teaching. They found fault in the way he ate with people. You know, he ate with the wrong people. He ate at the wrong times. He was just doing everything wrong in their eyes. But Jesus stayed focused on what he came to do. And I'm, I'm telling you this morning, wild horses couldn't stop Jesus from loving us and doing what he wanted to accomplish in this world. He was willing to not only do ministry in the face of opposition, he was willing to uh, uh, make the ultimate sacrifice. He let his enemies crucify him. The people who hated him the most, he let them crucify him, nail him to a cross and, and, and put him up to die. Now that's the kind of love and that's the kind of determination he had. He even asked the father while he was hanging on the cross in all of that pain and agony dying, he asked God to forgive these guys. Man, talk about tenacity. Talk about committed to love. Here he was dying, asking God, forgive these folks. They don't know what they're doing. That's commitment. Now I've learned some things about uh, horse showing. I don't have a horse. I just, I just come here and do, do what uh, God's directed me to do. But I've learned some things about horse shows and horse show people. Most horse show people, I don't believe, are in it for the money. Y'all are shaking your head no. I know, I know, there's some agreement there. I had, I had a doctor uh, in Columbus and he told me that he had bought his daughter a horse and she actually showed here sometimes. His wife was a lawyer. He was a doctor. And he said, it's a money pit. <laughs> so why do you do it? I, I know why, because you all have, you have taught me why you do this. You have a deep love for horses and the sport. It, it means a lot to you. You're passionate about it. And, and you know, people put up with a lot of negative things at the horse shows just to be able to show their horses. I hear how people are treated around the country. I hear the things that people go through and the, and the trials that they go through and the, and the trouble they have sometimes of getting here. And people just keep on doing it because they love horses and they love to show horses. They don't quit just because they have a bad day. Listen, when you're passionate about something, when love is your motivation, there's nothing that can stop you from doing what you want to do. And I, I, I believe if you just look at how some folks are treated by other folks and they just keep on loving over and over again because that's the motivation that drives them. Listen, wild horses can't keep you from doing what God has called you to do, what he's called you to be, if you have that love for him, if you care about him the way that, the way that he wants you to. I, I, I think we ought to think about this this morning. God is crazy in love with us. He's crazy in love with us. You know, a lot of times we see God up there in heaven and he's just got this big club and just waiting, you know, just wait. I just can't wait till that's not God. God, God is so much in love with you. He just cares so much about you. He, he just can't wait to spend time with you. Listen, that's the kind of God that we serve. That's the kind of God that Christ brought to show us to this earth. He loves you that much. Wild horses couldn't keep God from sending Jesus to earth for me and you to do what he needed to do. 
It couldn't keep him from pursuing us. Jeremiah 31 says this, I have loved you. This is God's word. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Wow. Forever. Everlasting love. And I think, here's the thing this morning. I think that maybe it's time for us to quit letting wild horses drag us away from from him. Because there's all kinds of things that try to drag us away from God. Whether we've believed or whether we haven't believed, there's all kinds of wild horses. Maybe, maybe today is a good day for you to think, I'm not going to let them, I'm not going to let them drag me away from God any longer. I'm going to make, I'm going to make a choice today to put those horses, those wild horses aside, and I'm going to stay focused and I'm going to let God love me and I'm going to love him. And so this morning, I just want to encourage you in that. And maybe if you've never made that decision, today would be a good day to not let the wild horses deter you but accept him as your Lord and Savior. I'm going to pray for you right now. And let's pray that God will will use us and keep us determined with that great tenacity. Father, thank you this morning that we have the privilege of serving and knowing you. Thank you, Lord, that you'll pursue us even to the ends of the earth. God, you've you've chased us down in many situations. You, You won't let wild horses keep you from loving us. And so, God, please don't allow us. Help us, Lord, to be able to uh, put everything else aside and focus on you and give you our love and passion and allegiance. I pray today, God, that for those that might be discouraged, that they would that they would get back up, dust themselves off and Lord, get back about the task that you've laid before them. And God, I pray if there's anyone this morning listening that would, that would need to have a relationship with you, that today would be the day that nothing would allow them to, to, be, uh, to be stopped from making that decision. Help us today, God, to trust you as Lord and Savior. Thank you for all you do. Lord, I pray for the World Equestrian Center today and all those exhibitors and, and all the folks that are here. Keep them safe today. Bless them on their way home. Thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen.